had a crazy fall going on and all this other stuff. So I just hit live here a couple minutes early. Daniel, what's up, man? Good to see you. Um, all right, good. Glad to see that people are hopping on here. So we must be live. Uh, and Sean, I will do a, a formal intro in a minute, but um, mm -hmm. I'm here with my buddy, Sean. And let's see here. I'm just checking all the other beautiful places that we are live. Where are we at? We're on uh, a couple Facebook pages. We're on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Um, nice. Roz says it's still counting down in there, but whatever. Okay. Well, we're live right now, at least here. Daniel Daniel can see us. Yeah, we're at least live to Daniel. And so Daniel, that's right, man. So if it's if Daniel not anywhere else, Daniel, you have to tell <laughs> everyone else what you hear here today. That's right. That's good stuff. Um, Brandon, what's going on? Brandon is looks like he's on YouTube. Nice, nice. And um, we've got guys weigh in. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you got to grant Facebook permission to show your name. Otherwise, it'll just say Facebook user. Uh, other than that, uh, Roz says we're on now. So that's good. Todd, what's going on? Uh, Daniel good is on here. What's up? Good to see you. No pun intended. Daniel good. And it's good to see you. Anyone get that? No, just, just you and I, Sean. All right, there we go. I'm going to be clear. I intend all <laughs> puns from here on out. So I'm not going to say no pun intended. They're always intentional. They're always intentional. That's right. Oh, I love it. All right. Chris is here. What's up, Chris? So guys, we're just going to, uh, little, Warm welcomes to those of you that are jumping on right now. Merrick is here. What's up? Always good to see you. Architectural Sheet Metal 101 on YouTube is here. Um, and let's see. I'm silencing my phone. Um, and let's see. Who else we got here? Yeah, we got people jumping on here. I'll be crazy here in a little while as people get us going. Um, Roz, what is going on with you? Numa and Christina Garcia, what's up? Good to see you as well. Um, let's see. Speaking of puns, Sean, did you hear about the silk worm race? No. It ended in a tie. No. I like that. <laughs> I like that. It's very dad joke territory, but that, that's also good. Nice, nice it, job. It is. Uh, you know. The founders of Night Shop are big on dad jokes. So it's always been part of the culture here. Um, yes. So I, I go right with that. Well, we have at dinner time here at the table, I go around and I always ask a stupid dad question for conversation. And anyway, yeah, they always, uh, they always get me. I saw an ad for uh, burial plots, but I was like, that's the last thing I need. Hey, All right. So hey. I promise I'm done. Yeah. All right. Um, guys, it's 502. <laughs> Let me get my notes out here for our uh, little conversation here tonight uh super excited to hang out here with you sean let me uh let me find my notes if i, I just where are they there it is all right cool so guys i'm here with uh, my buddy sean hill he's from a really kick-ass company called nice job and uh guys uh nice job and sean and his team are partners of the contractor fight and support a lot of the things that we do here. So before we get jumping in and Sean, you give an intro, uh, more of a bio of yourself, guys, give nice job, some love in the chat box, please. Seriously, give them a fist bump. Um, normally Sean, I say, give the middle finger, but not to you. I usually have them do that. We're, we're more of the thumbs up company. Yeah. There are more, you're a more thumbs up company. So there you go. Um, there you go. Beyond measures on here. And yeah, guys, before leaving a comment on Facebook, grant StreamYard permission. So we got some thumbs up coming your way and all this other stuff. So Sean, for somebody who has no idea what nice job is, what you do, why don't you give us a little bit of a uh, snapshot of that, man? Yeah. So uh, the shortest version is we do reputation marketing. So you just take those two words, break it down. Reputation, obviously, you know what you're known for, what your clients, your customers say about you, uh, kind of what your you know culture entails, how you're presenting your brand and your beliefs, and then marketing, straight up. And so what that kind of uh, manifests as is getting more customer reviews because if you can start there, that's the building blocks for anything else you can do within that space. So taking customer reviews, making it as easy as possible for your clients to leave those reviews having a system in place that saves you time so you don't have to do anything while this is happening. But then 
taking it from just being a review to actually being marketing gold. So we do that through insights so you can tell exactly what's being said in your reviews. We do that through new features like social sharing and even old features like auto sharing, where it'll get it out to things like your Facebook page, your Twitter account, now your Instagram page as well. And really taking that word of mouth, that social proof and putting it everywhere that is possible. We also have a product called Convert, which is a conversion rate based website, which helps kind of complete the whole loop. So what you're doing is you're creating this reputation. You're getting this great social proof that's going to help build some buzz around your community for your business. Then when they come to your website or they're coming through whatever part of your sales funnel, they already have some trust built in that leads to more leads and sales. So reputation marketing is kind of the gateway to what you ultimately should be looking for, which is customer driven growth. So that's a nice job from the product and perhaps a little bit of the mission side of it. Yeah. The company itself and the whole reason that I am here was built on a culture is we want to help other people. But our founder was in big advertising, big marketing, Samsung, NFL, things like that, and realized that sometimes people doing the quality work are really, really good at doing quality work. And they don't know as much about the marketing or they feel like they have to learn more. So we wanted to create tools. We wanted to have people that always were goal oriented, but really were there to help people. And so that's what they're about. Sometimes we end up looking like the dead Flanders out there because we're very positive and we're very sort of helpful. But in the end, the whole reason I'm here has nothing to do with the software and everything to do about the people uh, that I get to work with and the things that we try to go and our impact we try to make in the community. That's good stuff. So I, I want to go back at the way back machine to yep. uh, the, I guess it would have been the early 2000s. Okay. Uh, when I was running a painting company outside of Chicago and guys, just so you know, if you didn't see my comment, if you have questions for Sean, get them, get them ready um, to post. We're going to go through a few things here, just a nice job and the importance of reviews and this and that go back and forth. Uh, but we welcome any questions that you might have because um, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Uh, like I said, Sean, a nice job do a lot to, um, to partner with us in the fight and make a lot of things happen, but guys, we use them. Okay. And um, really grateful that we're using them. And I'll share a little bit of that in a minute. Um, but I remember the way, go back in the way back machine when getting reviews became, was becoming sexy. Like, and I, you know, it was just like, like there was always word of mouth, right? That's been around for centuries, right? Uh, word of mouth has always been around. But this whole thing about intentionally getting reviews, and Sean, we had a binder. I wish I had pictures of it, man. This was so long ago, or still had it. But it had, uh, we would get grade cards on all of our projects where mm -hmm. people would handwrite and fill them out. We put them in the little binder, the little protective sleeve things, three ring binder. It was just really, it was actually a pretty cool thing because you could just flip through it. Uh, you know, I'd be measuring the house or whatever, and people would be flipping through it. Yeah. And it was, um, it was really powerful because it was in people's own words and stuff. And this was before, for those of you that are younger, way younger, um, there was actually a time where we didn't have phones and we didn't have, um, like, I remember trying to um, get like something signed online without having to fax it or print it. I remember how hard it was mm -hmm. to get pictures uploaded to something. I mean, guys, uh, that those of you that are younger, you have no idea how much of a pain in the butt it was to do this when it started. Because Sean, what happened is our whistle got wet a little that, wow, we can like do this stuff, but it was yeah. still, the technology was lagging behind. So anyway, the reviews thing, um, we were always doing it, but I remember when it was like, everyone was preaching, you got to get your customers to give you reviews. You got to, and it was like a pain in the butt to make it happen. And there was a lot of friction around it. And, um, yeah. Jared says, say what? No phones. How old am I? Um, no, no, no mobile phones, man. I remember a day, like I remember beepers yeah. and stuff like that. We had pagers running around and all that. I'm 52, by the way, Jared Shaw. It's good to see you here, buddy. Um, so let's, um, I, so I, uh, let me share my experience with you guys. So, um, we're a relatively new partner together and over the past, I don't know, a few months, several months, but you guys were also a sponsor at the mile high profit summit. You came Correct. out, Caitlin did an awesome job helping my team with check-in. I mean, guys, it, it was amazing. You, when you say that you you guys are, have that culture of helping people, Sean, that is yeah. no BS. 
like it truly is. So hats off to you, hat tip to you and nice job in the culture. Honest to God, our, our team has been bragging about you guys and the spirit that you brought to that event and everything that you do. So I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, special shout to, to Caitlin Hammock, who, who works in the community team with me. It's really just her and I on the community side of it. But uh, part of the reason I wanted to bring her to the company is because she embodies that. And she was running around as much, making sure registration was set for my hot crop. Went, like all that stuff was set and ready to go. Uh, and, and, and in the way that I wanted her to nice job, got a little back burner at key moments, because ultimately if that event is great, that helped all the vendors that were there. It helped mm -hmm. all the participants are there. And that's how we approach that thing. But I'm going to special shout out to Caitlin. I know she's been working a lot with, with you guys in particular, but she is yeah. you, the unsung hero of the community. I get all the FaceTime, but, but she is the engine that makes it all work. Absolutely. She's a rock star. And, and so dude, we were, um, uh, we get a lot of love online and comments and DMS and emails, but we never had a get reviews strategy for yeah. the contractor fight. And Neil, you know, tapped one of you guys on the shoulder and just said, Hey, what would it look like to get the fight some reviews? And I got to tell you, man, I, I want to say we had like three Google reviews or some crap like that. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to pull it up right now. Just on my side here. Let me just see. Um, we had like three Google reviews, reg despite all the, um, excuse me, the people that we've helped literally around the world. Yeah. Uh, we had like two or three, and now we got 58 on Google. We got, I don't know, a bunch on um, uh, Facebook and other places. But you you guys had generated for us some crazy amount of reviews within a couple day period. Yeah. And um, and so I just want to say, you guys, Sean's here and we partnered with Nice Job um, because of the results that they get for people. So that's number one. But before we kind of get behind the scenes of how you guys work, yeah. um, what, like, it's easy to sit here and go, uh, yeah, it's important to get reviews. But sometimes when you hear some data or some, you know, news about it and the impact that it has, um, is there anything you could share with us? Uh, on in that lane that would yeah. uh, really wake us up if you're on the fence about making this a priority in your business. So I, I will absolutely drop drop a couple of numbers and, and things like that. I, I tend to, you know, my personality is a little bit on the other side, but I want to go back to something you said, you're like back in the early 2000s, you know, yeah. look about it. and even before that, this is what, what we had. Well, social proof reviews or anything like that goes back as far as you believe. And what I mean by that is that it's the caveman, going to bite something and some other caveman going like, mm, right? Cause I yeah. ate that berry, then I got sick, but yeah. that thing. So I, my mm, helped one person and my fellow caveman, <laughs> but then we walk a mile away, someone else comes up and there's nothing there. The next person goes, you look at, you know, evolution, you know, animalistic behavior and things like that. The warning signs is social proof kind of in a nutshell. So then it went to like, okay, let's make signs. Let's do this. Let's do that. Well, as it kind of evolu uh, goes through evolution, we get to the early 2000s and digital becomes a lot more. And what is happening? And I'll even, I'll, I'm going to fast forward even further. Go just right now. If I go, Tom, you should try this restaurant. It's great. Or you know what? You want to get that fixed? You should go with this thing. You inherently trust me. You know uh, exactly, you know, my sensibilities you know, I'm going to give you a good recommendation, but chances are maybe just to find the phone number, maybe just to find the email, maybe just to just see a little bit more for yourself. You're going to look them up online. Mm -hmm. Well, what's there? People know about ads. People know about websites, but if they're going directly searching you, they have their name and things like that. What you want to be is the signage all around that bush. Mm -hmm. And what reviews do is it adds so much on top that it triggers the brain a little bit to be like, maybe we're overthinking this. <laughs> Right. Mm. And even the oppositional defiant types that go, well, if everyone's saying it's good, then I want to go the other way. One, chances are they're a bad customer. But two, at the very least, you're putting of who we are. So if you don't believe this, then it's not going to happen. So when it comes to why reviews are so important and where nice job kind of fits in that ecosystem is what we are focused on is not we do a lot of education of why reviews are important. We do a lot of education of how you can use them. What we do as a software is make it as easy as possible and as quickly as possible on both sides of the equation. You had um, plenty of people that would rave about everything that you were doing. Mm -hmm. And then you had an opportunity to ask them for a review. They had the ability to leave a review in under a minute. 
And what do you know? You got a ton of reviews. Well, yeah. now if you want to advertise for mile high next year, you want to advertise, you know, uh, you know, in Nash Vegas, things like that, like mm -hmm. all that stuff, you now have this stable thing to choose from. You can still go create your own videos. You can still go create your own ads. You can still do all that stuff. But now you have the stable of proof. And that's the next level of where we're going. So the sentiment of why reviews are important goes back to caveman because people are looking for guidance. Mm -hmm. They don't want to make mistakes. Some people, even if they get guidance, will still bite that flower, still get sick, and they'll learn on their own. It is what it is. Statistically mm -hmm. now, though, you look at 90% of customers are searching online before doing any sort of business, including when they already know as the, the things I laid out there. Uh, the biggest stat I like to throw out there is in a recent study that came through, a review has become almost up to 12 times more impactful than anything a salesperson is going to say. And the main reason why is because the goal oriented nature when they think of why you were there. Because if I'm mm. reviewing something, maybe they think I got a little money on the side. Maybe they think I'm friends with you, but they know that I'm taking the extra effort to do it. The yeah. sale mentality, unfortunately, for some consumers is they're just trying to sell me. They're just trying to get me to an end goal. So by having that social proof being so impactful of what it really is, it now allows you to work on closing and not having to continuously sell through. And the mm -hmm. final bit is that we ran some recent studies and recent tests through. We're adding a review into like an ad on Facebook, yeah. got up to a 300% click through rate. 300% more than without the ad there. And the reason why is because where you're connecting them with is you're just presenting information. You're not quite making a push yet. And you're not the one bragging. You're not the one yeah. bragging, right? It's somebody exactly. else bragging about you. And that goes back. I mean, this is a whole different topic, but like brand versus reputation. I like to talk about this a lot is you'll never own your reputation. Right. Mm. I'm, I'm going to use a phrase that I don't really like to use, and I'm not trying to go down this whole other avenue, but you hear about, you know, cancel culture and things like that. And, and that whole mentality, not diving into it. But the one thing I want to take out of that whole social thing that's happening now is you don't own your reputation. If people want to try to, you know, attack it, come after it and make the change, the more you fortify it, the more you're constantly getting reviews over and over, the more that you're actually having it be a part of your culture, that you're actually buying into it the stronger mm -hmm. it'll be, but it always can be skewed one way or another. And the last example I use is like, you know what? Some people never order from Pizza Hut because they want to support a local guy. And right. that's their right. reputation. The reputation for that consumer is they're a big chain. They're not going to be as good as the local guy. And so again, I, I you talk about cancel culture, all the other stuff, like reputation comes down to you'll never really own it. However, you can do so much to craft and fortify it that you can have it actually work for you and build up your brand to levels you'll never get to without it. You know, it's funny. Anytime we travel quite a bit, uh, the queen and I, and every time we go somewhere, um, well, even locally, if we're going to look for a new place to eat or whatever, dude, the first thing she does is these places pop up. She goes right to the reviews, you know, and, and I'm sure most of us do. And in fact, you know, when I, I was looking for a certain trade here around the house or a service that we needed. There was a pest control company that kept knocking on our doors and I appreciated their hustle. And, you know, so I went to Google and I put in their thing and I looked at the reviews and they're great. And we hired them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, one thing I, I do want to say here though, pay attention. If you're on this light right now, pay attention to what I'm going to say, because I'm going to give you a stat that I think will help you, um, because some, some people right now are going, well, I'm just going to rely on word of mouth. Yeah. I'm not going to go through the hassle of this. And for those, because we believe it or not, you guys, we get so many people that when I say build your brand and get reviews and create content and all this, they're like, I just stand on my word of mouth and blah, blah, blah. Well, guys, let me tell you this. There's a thing called a DISC profile, D-I-S-C. All right. Mm -hmm. And this is fresh in my mind because we just had this conversation with my team in Houston last week, so, which is why it's here. So. Um, it's the only stat I'm going to give you. About 53% of the population have an S or a C in their DISC profile as their dominant um, feet, uh, dominant trait. Okay, These people are generally uh, more steady, more cautious, slower to take action, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go deep into this. So 53 out of 100 clients of yours are likely to be an S or a C. Those are the two profile types on a disc that are least likely 
to refer you. Think about that. Because their fears are they don't want to be wrong. It's a whole thing in the disc assessment stuff. But they don't want to open their mouths. So they might have delivered an amazing, you might have delivered an amazing experience. But because of certain internal fears that they have because of how they're wired, they're not going to open their mouth and recommend you because they fear being wrong. Okay. And so this is where those S's and C's can go and check out your reviews and your websites or, or your other customers will go there and S and C would go and give you a nice review, but they're not necessarily going to talk about, you know, you to somebody else. So guys, there's so much into this whole social proof thing. It's ridiculous, but. Well, it's um, interesting to talk about behavior changing is Google just recently rebranded. They changed Google My Business to Google Business Profile. Now, hmm. maybe it's just changing for change sake, things like that. But if you kind of look into it, my interpretation on this in particular is they've realized that the Google My Business no longer needs to be pitched to the business owners, right? Because it was Google My Business, my Google My Business account, right? But the consumers are using it as a business profile. And trust me, as a marketer, sometimes we have to overthink with the words that we're using to make sure we get the point across. But now people are saying like, oh, well, look up their Google business profile, right? That is something that has kind of a, a good conversational sort of tone. It really helps to, um, you know, solidify what you should expect to find there. Because I don't think the consumer thought of it as a Google My Business. They already thought about it as a business profile. But now that they're giving right. it that the official name they're going through, is like, wouldn't surprise me down the lines, where they're like, oh, well, your Google review is left on a Google business's profile. And that triggers some people's head of like, oh, like um, back in school, you speak, oh, it goes on your permanent record. I don't know if you've ever yeah. seen your permanent record, Tom. I was threatened a lot with it. I've never seen it. Yeah, but I've never seen it either. Telling a consumer, if you leave me this review, it's going to go directly on my Google business profile. In their mm -hmm. head, they're going to go, oh, so if I look on Google, people are only going to see that only find that. So now they're incentivizing more. And going back to that personality type things, that's why it's so important for you to be asking and have a system in place that makes it easy because some people will give you reviews mm -hmm. they just don't want to take the initiative to do themselves there's other ones that'll leave you reviews and they'll kind of ask like well what do you want me to write or what should i say and you want to be prepared to go you know what tell us about your experience and you don't have to tell them yes that review is going to help you sell others but you don't tell them that you should always phrase reviews which is true it's feedback to us the business and we are confident in what we're doing and we want to learn if we make a mistake mm. and we want to celebrate when we do things well, that we're willing to do this out in the public forum. So the reason that we're asking you for a review, as opposed to like I see on one of the comments on our Facebook, Jacob asked about using verifiable reviews, which I'll touch on in a second, but word of mouth is great, but word of mouth can also come a game of telephone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think John's brother said they were, oh wait, they said they were affordable or cheap. That's two different words there, right? Very much so. That's yeah. two very yeah. different words there. So wouldn't you like to, to kind of write it down and, and have it to display? Jacob, on your question about verifiable reviews, if you get a good review in any sort of form, turn it into social media uh, posts, turn it into something great. Where verifiable reviews come more and more important is you're now allowing the consumer to track through and verify that it's not just marketing copies. So sometimes we get like we're going to talk about it in a little bit, but like our social sharing feature, we added in the ability to make some small edits so that you didn't have to worry about if someone spelled a technician's name wrong, spelled your business name wrong or anything like mm. that, so that you could make it ready to social share. You can make it ready to put an ad, but someone could still track through and see like, oh, they wrote J-O-N to the J-O-H-N, but I see yeah. that's the same review. So whenever you can use verifiable reviews, absolutely. But if you have good praise, find the best way to get it out there. The worst thing you can do with any sort of good feedback is just keep it to yourself. Let's just segue into the social sharing feature that you now have, because you just brought it up. So I, I had it down in my notes a little more, but like, what, what's that about? Like, how does that work? What, yeah. What's you so with, about? with nice job, we had auto sharing, which what it would do is for example, if you got a review on Google, um, it would take that review copy and it would turn it into a Facebook post. And we had it for Twitter as well. Um, the one thing we were looking for in particular was how to get to Instagram because Instagram isn't a text-based platform. There's a little bit of imagery and it's more visual in that sense. So that was kind of where the initial thing started with social sharing. So mm -hmm. social sharing is a new feature that does allow you to share it to Instagram. But the way it works is when the review is left on uh, Facebook, Better Business Bureau, Google My Business, any of the platforms that connect it, 
pulls back into your nice job dashboard. Instead of auto sharing out in that sense, because you really need to prepare for some of these other platforms. Um, and everything I described, you'll also be able to make it for Facebook post and Twitter. So you can still auto share those other things, but now with this mm -hmm. new social sharing engine, I would just recommend always going through this process. You click share, it's gonna give you the ability to take a snippet of the review. So we're using machine learning to read the context and sentiment and find the highest impact part of it. So you get those reviews that are like, you know, John and Steve came by, they were tremendous. My backyard looks better than ever. And, you know, I was worried that they couldn't come on Tuesday, but they assured me they could. And sure enough, they were there 10 minutes early and they didn't leave anything behind the cleanest company I've ever kind of worked with. Hmm. That's a long one. That's a lot there. That is. Right? Yep. But the highest impact snippets from that breakdown is, you know, my backyard's never looked better. Boom. Yep. Concise. Bam. Um they arrived on time or whatever. To, Cleanest you know, company whatever. ever, whatever. But what it's doing is that some machine learning can pick up the best snippet. Over okay. time, right now, I'll be perfectly honest, it's trying its best. It's still learning. Mm -hmm. But what it's going to do is going to give you the highest impact snippet so you can cut it down. But then you can also post the full review from there, but you'll be able to see what it's going to look like. So you see mm -hmm. what it'll look like on Facebook. You'll see what it'll look like on Twitter or Instagram. From there, you get a chance to edit. So from the edit is fix capitalization, uh, you know, fix a technician's name, your theirs, theirs, the ER versus the EIR, yeah. that whole thing. Um, you do have the ability to, to edit almost as much as much as, or much as little as you want. That goes back to what I said to Jacob. You want to keep that verifiable review. Mm -hmm. From there, the last thing you do is you can pick a bordered background. Now, right now, this is our initial rollout, the bordered backgrounds. Eventually, we're working on more customization and things of that nature. But what that's going to allow you to do is now make it impactful eye popping it's going to catch you know the people's kind of scrolling through your feed but it's also going to lead to more engagement mm -hmm. and the reason we're so excited about this whole thing is one the ability to share to instagram really i don't know anyone else is truly doing that yet um there's some where they tell you like oh well copy paste it then throw it in something like canva then design it like right. this you don't have to worry about redesigner we can have it fully ready to go but now it gives you the ability to have a more dynamic social media feed across those platforms mm -hmm. while using this heavily impactful social proof. And so right now it's a manual process. You still can get a social post out and I'd probably say a minute and a half just to make sure you double check everything. Right. Um, but goes right out. But if you're still using the auto sharing and things like that, that now gives you whenever you get a chance to send your office manager or you just go in yourself once or twice a week, gives you the ability to make some posts, get them on out there and not have to worry about having a social media manager or anything like that. To all my social media managers out there, I've been there. I respect you. Don't worry. I'm still going to tell them to hire you because if you want to do it really right, you need more than just a post every once in a while. Yep. However, for those that are in and out of the truck, for those that are washing their hands thoroughly at the end of every job, this is going to give you the ability to have a social media presence using these heavily impact things. And as I said, with machine learning and what we're kind of developing with it and what we're trying to technology we're putting within this, it's going to lead to being able to go on your Instagram stories. It's going to be able to perhaps animations, custom backgrounds, things of that nature. This really is, we finally busted down a door and now we're looking at a hallway of opportunity. That's so cool, man. That's yeah. I think that's a game changer and it's only going to get better. Right. I mean, the yeah. version, first version of anything, you know, is solid, but this is going to grow. So yeah. back to one of the questions I had for you earlier, kind of behind the curtain on nice job, like, you guys are incredibly successful. Um, I've talked to several of our fight members that have worked with you guys and, and they're, you know, I've done some posts in our private coaching groups and, and I hear nothing but good stuff. Like, Holy crap. I couldn't believe how many reviews I got. And this, what's, what's a little of the, um, under the hood behind yeah. that? Like how, how are you able to do that? Um, because I imagine I'm going to imagine something, then I'll shut up that it has to be really, really, really simple for the client. Yeah. Not a big pain in the butt going through all this, you know, process and this and that. So I'm just curious, what, how, how does it, how does it work so well? Um, are you a, an auto racing fan at all? Auto racing? Yeah. Uh, I'm casually familiar with it, but okay. not. Great As you can tell, it. since I yeah. call it auto racing, I'm not the biggest fan. However, yeah. I'm going to make an analogy from there. NASCAR. Uh, there you go. Yeah. No, like I think NASCAR, I watch the Formula One, but. Really, what makes a good racer? Is it the car or is it the driver? Really, the best racers is a combination of both. So what you right. need is you need drivers at the wheel, but you need these highly 
tuned specific engines that are going to drive the whole thing. Yeah. So to start with the drivers, which is honestly where I'll always start, mates, because I'm in the community department, is when we think about new uh, features, new products, new things that we're going to do, we start with, will our community, will our clients love this? Okay. Right. If they will, that's the first building block, because if it's just something for fluff's sake. If it's just something that's going to make us feel good about it, but doesn't actually have an impact, it's not worth our time. So that makes sure that we we have we get feedback, we, we talk to our community and stuff like that, we look for it. When it comes to the technical side of things is, it's about making it as easy as it can for the clients and breaking down obstacles. Again, we're dealing with a fundamental psychological principle of the word of mouth gone digital, of the you know referral, of the social proof, of the trust building. To make it digital and make it impactful is, we need to one, have some psychological meaning to the tech, but then also make sure that it's as simple for the last person that touches it. The last person mm. touches it is the client. Now we wanted to make it really easy for you, but if I told you, Tom, you know what? It's going to take you two minutes every time to set up, but you'll get a review 100% of the time. You'd be like, okay, yeah. maybe that's worth a lot. Now, again, 100% of the time is just not psychologically possible. Some people just don't want to leave reviews. They don't want to go through things like that. So what we did is like, okay, what's the shortest amount of time it will take you that you'll use it consistently, knowing that with consistent use, you start to see consistent results, right? Our original tagline was getting great companies the reputation they deserve because we fundamentally realized that you kind of have to be a good company or what we're going to get you is the reputation you deserve, which might not be great, right? Like you might, if you're doing bad, you have bad customer experience, you're doing bad things, that's what kind of come back through it. But the tech underneath was the one thing we realized is that people don't leave reviews for a couple of factors. One, they don't know how. They literally don't know the best way to do it for you. They trust right. that you'll tell them, but if you don't tell them, they're not really sure. Is Google the best for you? Would you rather on Facebook? Would you rather me write you a letter? And you know, like you're talking about, like write something down, put it in a card. Do you want me to film a video? Like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. The second thing is, is once you tell them what to do, or you ask them and give them the pathway, the first time there's an obstacle that takes out about, honestly, about 75% of the people. Exactly. Right? And then if you don't follow up, you're going to lose at least 50% of that 75%. So now you're down to only 25% that might do it. So if you eliminate obstacles, which things like nice job does is um, to the best of our ability, obviously there's privacy concerns, things like that. But if we can determine that they don't have Google, they have no ability to log into a Google, my business or Google business profile to the review or anything like that, mm -hmm. then we don't make that the first option. It'll bump up whatever your second option is. Um, it'll make sure if they don't have a Facebook page, they won't put that first. It might bump up another one. So by getting rid of those barriers, you now have gotten into the gateway where they're about to do it. But the one thing is life always gets in the way, always gets in the way. Our nice job technology, it starts with a text message. It follows up with the three emails. And I actually talked to someone at Mile High Summit that I, I want to address in this thing here because he said something that kind of made me chuckle and I thought about ever since. Okay. It starts with a text up three emails. And the reason why is that text, it shows, it kind of has this feeling of, act right now. Yeah. But then they turn around the dog knocked over something. The kids start screaming. Something like that happens. They forget about it. Or more often than not, I don't know about you, Tom, but I can't tell you how does I'm looking at my phone and then my buddy texts me like, dude, are you seeing this? Are you uh -huh. watching that? Like, right. what was that? Like, what? And it immediately derails and I can't remember anything that I'm doing. Uh, so after the technology is following up with three emails and by changing the tone of those emails is that what you're doing is you're reminding them in the moment of, the heat, of peak happiness when they were most excited about your services, mm -hmm. but you also are meeting them where they are. And where it goes back to, will our clients love us? Our clients love this feature is it's also telling them that you care, you want that feedback and that you're kind of building a relationship from there. From the technological side, the reason that we're trying to do more machine learning and we're trying to get rid of out of the old reputation management styles is because as things evolve, you need more than just the collection to collect reviews. You need to understand what those reviews are and how you can sort of use them. So the technology side of it, you know, I could bring on one of our engineers here and he'll say some stuff that's like, wait, wait, what? Like, it's actually not as easy as you think to make something auto post to Instagram with privacy concerns, you know, filters, things like that, sizing, uh, you know, how it needs to go through it, things like that. But yeah. the reason that we focus so hard on making technology super advanced, but super, super easy is because for us, you are also our clients. So we wanna bring down the barriers for you. Why won't you use something like this? Because there's too many barriers. It takes too long. It's not easy to understand. The reason that we automated most things, and I love all the automation, 
but you can do so many cool things with a nice job if you just go just beyond the automation. But the reason that our base product is set it and forget it is because of all that you are doing to run your business and just take the actual technical skill of it all. You know, yeah. if you're a, a painter, landscaper, anything like that. The best physical skill of it all takes so much knowledge, so much training. What's that old phrase? You're paying me for my 30 years, not my 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Why should you have to add on a marketing degree to all that? I already went and got the marketing degree. Let's just go yeah. work together. Yeah. Um, for any of my people listening, I actually didn't get a marketing degree. I get a radio TV film degree, but it's all the same in the end. Um, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like we, we have this expertise. So the tech behind Nice Job, we try to be kind of try to be advanced because that's what you need to be as a software company. But we build everything with this core value of you have has to be easy to use. We have to believe and know that you're going to love it. And it has to be something that builds to something else. We don't make roads to dead ends. It's mm -hmm. something that said every so often around nice job. Everything we do should be opening doors for more opportunity or it should be scaling us up to get on a rocket ship or whatever analogy you want to use there. Yeah. But we always are trying to be forward thinking in that regard. And as tech evolves, we'll continue to do so. But the reason I'm so confident in this company and what we can do is because it's built on that, okay, what will people love? Let's get them part of the process and let's continue moving forward. Yeah, it's, you know, I think this crowd, especially the contractor crowd, we all know we should have a CRM and an estimating system and stuff. But the minute we use it and it's a pain in the ass, we put it aside and we forget about it. I can't tell you how many people we talk to. They're like, yeah, I bought this subscription based software or whatever that I've been using and I forgot that I have it and I've been paying X amount of dollars for several months or years. And that's what I love about what you guys are doing with Nice Job. It's simple. You know, and, and for those watching, one of our va core values in the contractor fight is simplicity. So I think that's why I appreciate it so much um, because, you know, they, um, I don't know. I mean, it's sim simple wins, right? It's easy to confuse ourselves with things. Yeah. All right. Well, so like the simplicity thing is, again, the your pit crew needs to know how the engine works. You're yeah. the driver. You need to know where the gas pedal is. <laughs> Mm -hmm. perhaps how to shift, how to steer, then you do you. So that's what we try to do it is you're going to use this tool as a tool. So I'm not saying you don't need to know how the back end engineering works, Sure. but we want to make sure that when you go on and part of the automation part of it is if you're one of those people that forgot you had it in the background, yeah, you'll know it's working because you'll be seeing reviews coming in. So you're still getting exactly. the reward. You don't, you might've forgot what you set up, but we're hoping that every single time you're seeing results. Come in. So what, if I'm a contractor, I'm a, uh... I see my buddy Jake Sam Miguel's on here. What's up, Jake? Good to see you, bud. So Jake, he's out doing some carpentry project, building something cool for somebody. Uh, he gets done with the job and they're like, oh my God, that was, it's beautiful. You were amazing, blah, blah, blah. What comes out of his mouth and what does, what is the next step that he would have to take to make it simple, to get it in the hands of the homeowner? So I'm going to go back one step. The best thing that he can do is before he starts anything like that, I say, hey, at the end of this, we're all said and done. I definitely want to get your feedback. I definitely want to ask what you thought and, and hear all about it. Um, from there, when I get to that moment of peak happiness, hey, I'm done. This is how it looks. This is great. And they start saying their review pretty much. They start raving. They start saying it's really, really good. You almost want to take, I call it the restaurant mentality. When they hand you the bill and they have the line that says tip right there. <laughs> The same yeah. thing. So when you go to do invoice or anything like that, say, hey, I also sent you a text message. If you can go ahead, click that link right there. It'll let you select the review platform. I love to share you know, your feedback, not just with my team, but but anyone that would want to have the same experience you have. And that's the way I like to really phrase it. We want to share this with anyone that wants to have the same cool. experience you had because they'll, they now identify with the person that they're helping. They now know that not only does it help you because you said you're going to share it with their team, but it could help you a bit further by helping to kind of generate that next one. As for the actual Love functional it. thing, depending on if we integrate natively with your CRM, it, it, chances are you do something in your CRM and it'll automatically trigger. But if you're going to go full manual, I like to call it, um, you can use like I have iOS, so we have the iOS app here. Take your phone, open up Nice Job, you hit get a review, type in their name, email, and their cell number, then hit get a review, and it takes away from there. It'll send a text cool. message. A couple days later, it'll send the email if needed. If they leave a review at any point, it takes them out of the queue. So no unnecessary messages. Cool. If you want to go a step further and really help your conversion rate, take a photo of the job while you're doing it as well. You can attach that right in. It's just a simple tap, tap. 
attach that. So whenever they get a review request from you, mm. it has that photo right there. It also pulls back in your dashboard. So you can turn that into an Instagram post. You can turn that into a Google My Business post or Google Business nice. Profile post. I'm working on it, Google, I'm working on it. The Google Business Profile post. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can you do all things, but really it comes down to the setup is create the moment where they know you're going to ask for the review because you already told mm -hmm. them. When you ask them for the review, let them know that you've already provided them with the simplest way to do so. So they don't have to do anything but follow your instructions from there on out. And then let nice job kind of do its thing. It's going to follow up if need be. It's going to make sure that they have the best pathway to lead the review. Um, we have on like our YouTube channel, we have a couple of people there. Um, Nicholas Rozier, who does HVAC, I live in Texas, am I correct? Um, he built on a full process where he kind of uses the get them to say yes, that, that kind of sales tactic. Mm -hmm. He used that to get 60 out of 62 clients to give a review because what he said was he would have a part like, do you have your cell phone on you? Why well, just sent you a text? Did you get it? You did? Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, that'll leave you a review. So now he has the phone in their hand looking at the link. Cool. There's so many other little strategies and tips you can do it, but it's based off this by using the software is you got to do one thing. It's just say, go, nice job, go. Then nice job will take it off from there. Hmm. I love that, man. So Beyond Measure has a question here. Yep. Would it be wise to have the customer describe the whole truthful experience, especially if there was an issue? Then they can describe our solution to make the experience top notch, wise or not. So you never want to guide the review someone leaves. And what I mean by that is, uh, don't worry, I'm not fading into the matrix here. It's just a rough green screen. Um, uh, you want them to leave the exact experience they have. The best thing I might recommend is that if you are throughout the process, letting them know that you are going to take feedback and that you want to hear feedback, chances are if they have an issue that wouldn't look great in a review. They're going to bring that up before you leave site or before you kind of close the matter. So I would say is you always want to allow the customer to leave the exact truthful review because that's the, the best, you know, social proof, right? It's yep. as real as possible. But for those that are like, all right, well, sometimes like we do with the follow-up and sometimes there's, you know, things don't quite go right. I think you never want to be fearful. There's nothing, nothing that someone could write in a review that you couldn't turn positive. And mm -hmm. I'll say like, the worst thing of like, these people are total ripoffs. They're criminals. They should be thrown in jail. What that is, is that is a definitive part on your business's timeline. And you now have who knows how much time to fix that narrative. Right yep. now, if six months later, another review comes up and it says, these guys ripped me off. Well, now it's a harder road, but you still can fix it. You still can improve it. The best thing to kind of sum up into one is, you want your customers to be ready to tell their full story. Anything you could get before the review process comes in is probably helpful. The more of a welcoming situation you have, the more likely they are to bring up objections. But I like when they get very, very detailed because yeah. that gives you a good uh, opportunity to perhaps fix some things in your process you never thought about it. Simple things I've heard from other business owners of like, people didn't think we were professional because I brought all my tools in a bucket instead of a bag. Right. Mm. And then I realized that the type of business they were, they did tiling. They realized that, you know what? People wanted that little bit of extra mm. airs. Right. And because some yeah. people looked at it like the review that he used in question was when they showed up with their bucket of stuff, I was a little concerned. But man, my kitchen looks better than ever or whatever kind of thing it's. But they, they distinctly had that in there. And someone's like, ah, like it's kind of a bad look, but you know, and they were able to fix it. So, Mm -hmm. have them describe everything they can. When it comes to replying to reviews, you don't want to get into everything being super all the top, but just know when people look at the reviews, I think it's people who read up to 10 reviews before making a decision. Hmm. Chances are they're looking for the three best, the three worst, but they're also looking along your timeline to see how you improve. So the more detail it's in your reviews, one, you can always take snippets to make it the best marketing gold, but realistically it tells the full story and it gives you the opportunity to improve evolve but if you get someone that wants to be chatty let them be chatty because again you also can have them leave a second review on another platform and just focus on you know how you followed up yeah um, the other last thing i'll put it's definitely a big heavy um task it's a lot of work but if you ever get a customer where you serve them you had to kind of make up make a solution things like that that is a great blog article a little bit of case study of how we dealt with the williamson family 
how we how we made solutions, how they became a customer for life. So if you really want to expand it out, detailed feedback is always good. Sometimes you got to do a lot more work to turn it into true gold or got to put a lot of pressure to really turn it into a diamond. But if you're ever not letting someone say something or you're, if you're still doing the old practice of, well, I send an email and if it's seven and below, it goes to my personal inbox and if it's eight and above, I send it in. If you're still doing that, that's one of the worst <laughs> mistakes you can make because you now have broken trust. It's really hard to get back. You know, the, we, we get a lot of people who um, who will ask, you know, oh my, or they'll share in our groups like, oh my God, I just got my first negative review. What do I do? You know, and, and, and I would, I want to just share a little of my thoughts on that and that'll give you some time to think too. Um, but guys, it, you should reply, this is my personal opinion. So it's not backed up in any data or anything like that other than just, I think, building trust and authenticity and, and, you know, all that stuff, which is kind of important, but, um, review, I, I respond to every review. If I see it, I'll reply to it. Okay. If, if there's no reply, it's like, most likely I didn't see it. Um, and especially the bad ones. Okay. Especially the bad ones, because I will tell you guys something right now. Anybody who's a normal human being knows that everyone has a bad day on the job. Everyone ha makes a, uh, every restaurant makes a bad steak now and then and shit like that. And so I think when there's too many things that are perfect about you, okay, I'll give you an example. We had some, and, and I just said, um, uh, well, I don't have to go down that, but we had somebody about the profit summit, um, share that what they didn't like about it. I think I think it was a one star review hmm. about Profit Summit because they thought it was too sales pitchy, yep. which was funny. Out of three and a half days or two and a half days, three days, whatever it was, maybe 20 minutes, 50, 30 minutes total of the whole thing, we talked about what people could buy. Okay. And so we had a conversation last week with my team about it. And we're like, you know, I just don't want to dismiss that because it's really easy to get defensive. Right. Yeah. And so, our first reaction normally when we get a bad review, you guys, all of us, is what the fuck, right? You know, it's yeah. like, um, and but but you don't want to avoid it. Okay. You've you've got to um you you've got to reply to people. And and one of the things I want to give people is you can reply with a yes and okay. Yeah. Yes and um I, I might reply, you know what, Sean? you are absolutely right. And I'm so sorry we left a mess on your project. Um, and that was, um, that wasn't right of us. However, that's the and part. Um, this feedback from you has been invaluable because it caused us to look at our processes and the way we wrapped up a project and how we set expectations. And, um, you know, as I've already addressed with you on our phone call about this, yeah. You know, blah, blah, blah. I just want to thank you again here publicly for bringing this to our attention. It was an area that we can get better. See, that shows that you're just more your normal business. Yeah. And on, on that specific one, normal. you talked about, Tom, you also reminded me of the thing I wanted to bring up with that guy who talked to me was that one in particular, I, I, we saw it come in and I thought, and, and forgive me, I can't remember, but I remember seeing something you had talked about what the contractor fight was about. And you were like, you know, we're going to give advice and that. And you're like, and every so often I'm going to sell you something. Mm -hmm. Now yep. you set that expectation. And so a lot of bad reviews and reviews come from a failure to meet expectations. Mm -hmm. And I always say it doesn't mean the expectation is unrealistic. So perhaps now you and your team can look at it and go, okay, I told them that from time to time I was going to sell them something. I don't feel that the summit had that at all, but that was their mm -hmm. takeaway. And so perhaps it's okay. Well, maybe they thought, well, yeah, my day to day within the contractor fight in the Facebook group and a lot of the, you know, the other things I'm doing from time to time. But I thought at the summit, it was a little bit more, you know, bizcation as opposed mm -hmm. to that. Like uh, maybe I didn't think. And so that goes, okay, we shouldn't change what we did at the summit because right. it wasn't a huge sales pitch. It wasn't that. Right. And, but maybe their takeaway was they thought it was going to be kind of an extra level thought it was going to be maybe a little bit of a, a different element. And so perhaps we need to say, okay, just a small little bit in our line, my whole problem is this, this, and this, and don't worry, we're gonna have some great, you know, uh, offers and advantages for you to take uh, forward to. Or maybe it was, you know what? And I hate to say this as one there, but maybe we need to move the vendors like a little bit further away from the ballroom. Maybe. 
right? Like maybe that mm-hmm. maybe we need to make it look. This is our zone. If you want to skip the vendors, they won't be happy with that, but then it won't feel salesy or anything like that. But now you have that way to dive in. And yeah, you got what 50 reviews almost a, a couple days afterwards. You skyrocketed right. up, but that one's always going to sit in your head. But when it comes mm-hmm. to like replying to reviews, the person you're also talking to, and I use this analogy a lot. If you've heard me on another podcast, I said it is when someone leaves a bad review, think of it as like a waiting room. And what they're doing is they're yelling at the person behind the desk or they're talking to the person behind Mm. the desk. And when they hit send, it's them leaving the room. Yeah. And now everyone else in the waiting room is looking at you. So you definitely want to reply directly to that person. But the people that's benefiting are the people in that theoretical waiting room. And so that's, you talk about the yes and. Like, yes, you Mm. know, we did that. And it's something to kind of figure out. We had one... um, I'm trying to think of the, the one example I just talked about recently where someone, they completely screwed up and they said like, you know what? We always strive for perfection, but we know perfection is impossible. Yeah. We are so sorry that you ended up being our one screw up, but we'd be more than happy to make you the first success of our comeback story. And it was such mm. an over dramatic thing to say, but they kind of were matching the sensibilities. They were displaying who they are as a company of like, look, we want to be perfect. We're not going to, but when this comes in, it really growls us and we want to get back there right away. Yeah. Um, the final thing I'll touch is someone said to me at the mile process, they're like, I don't use email. Email's dead. No one's using email anymore. And I kind of chuckled a bit because if someone sends me a text and sends me an email, I'm, oh, this is just me personally. They send me a text and an email. I feel like, well, I gave them two pieces of contact information. <laughs> so I must have wanted to hear from them. Because I get plenty of random emails and I get plenty of random texts, but very few send me a text and then reply with an email. And the people that do are people that either A, if it's a company, well, I give my information for them to contact me to let me know when they were coming so we could schedule, we could talk about pricing, things like that. Or it's a company I really care about, or it's a person I kind of know. So the email being dead, one, email on a computer might be dead. I mean, I do check most of everything on this nowadays. (laughs) But the fact of having two forms of communication, I, I, I was trying to think, I'm like, I don't disagree, but... I disagree with you, but that's where we talk about building those relationships, having yeah. proper follow-ups and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that 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 kind of stuck with me from there. But as your bad review, I saw that too. And I remember the first thing clicked in my mind as someone familiar with you. And I would say that to anyone if they asked about the contractor mm-hmm. fight is, well, Tom does say up front that if something's valuable, he's going to pitch you it. Yeah. He never said that I will never, ever try to you know, convince you of something. And mm-hmm. at the same time is you also are giving away books just for shipping and handling. So look, maybe you can deal with one sales pitch when you're getting a book practically for free. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and again, it was it, it, like, listen, listen, I think this is normal. My first gut reaction was defensiveness. And then literally about 10 seconds into it, I was like, all right, well, let's explore that. You know, we had a conversation behind the scenes with the team and, and you know, I'm not going to go into, but we have, there's certainly things that we can always do better in any business, any event, any program you do tonight, you know, whatever, there's always a way to get better. Um, and I just, I guess the big point is um, don't, it, I think you look worse when you avoid replying. Um, next thing I would say to give you all confidence out there is what I was saying earlier, most people are normal human beings that you want to work with. They can recognize when there's some batshit crazy in a review. Yep. Okay. Like, I, I don't know about, I mean, I'm sure this is your world. You, you're in reviews all day, every day, and I'm sure you see some crazy stuff. Um, and I would also say that this is not the place to argue and try to make your case, yep. right? Because then you just look like all you're doing is defending take it on the chin, be mature about it. Say, Hey, you know, I'd be happy to get on the phone with you. Have a conversation. We've actually left you three voicemails, one on this date, one on this date, and one on this date and sent four emails on these dates. Just put the facts out and go. And unfortunately we haven't been able to connect with you. So feel free to call our office when it works for you. Yep. And another tip to throw out there is you don't always have to say, in fact, I would say as little as possible of like, Oh, we'll make it right. We'll make it better. Cause sometimes Mm -hmm. you might be right. You, they just had unrealistic expectations. You can't do it any cheaper. You can't do it any quicker. Yeah. So I think what you always want to say is we are open to continuing the conversation. Just because this like is that, where we yeah. are now doesn't mean that we're not open to it uh, in the future. And yeah, I mean, you should accept all reviews. You should reply to all reviews as best you can. I would also recommend as a tip, 
get away from kind of generic, hey, thanks for your business sort of thing. The more specific you can get, the better. But the last thing I'll say is, if someone's leaving a bad review is remember, they might not be your ideal customer. And just like you talk about with your culture and your business that we weed out people that won't succeed, right? When yeah. we bring in a new person, if they don't fit with our culture, they don't align, they tend to find themselves going out the door, whether it's you're letting them go or whether they end up quitting because the culture weeds out the bad. Let your reviews, let your customer mm -hmm. experiences weed out the crazies and weed out the bad. Because guess what? If someone yeah. thinks that you're too expensive, maybe they're never going to think that you're right. uh, affordable enough. Maybe they'll never understand the value you have. Or if they think the, but the biggest complaint, I don't know how many people, if, if you're watching this and you got a comment like this, let me know on, on the comments today. Do you ever the one where someone's like, well, they were only here for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Like they had this expectation that it should take forever and you were quicker. And now they're holding that against you. Mm -hmm. Like you're never going to win that one. But by having it there, someone else is going to read and go, wait, 10 minutes. How I'll sign up for that. They could even leave crap behind. If they're in and out in 10 minutes, perfect. Yeah. That's so right. you never know what a review is going to signal to other people, including like the, yeah, that's that's very Karen-y and I'm not a Karen, so I'm going to just ignore that one. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, a lot of our fighters get um, get reviews that where they never hired the company. They got a proposal or an estimate and they were offended by how much money it is. And that's the review. I give them yeah. a one star because I'm offended at how expensive they were. And I'm like, well then don't it's like pick pick a restaurant right pick yeah. a a, a five-star hotel okay then don't stay there don't eat there don't you know move on but for the people that have that much time on their hands to go and do a review about i was offended by your proposal they just need to be throw punched so yeah. um the best response i heard of that was someone was like well we do make a series of youtube videos tell how to do it yourself so feel free to take that information for free if That's we're too right. expensive, go buy the materials, yeah. go do the labor, go do all that yourself. We'll 100%. guide you through it. But if you want our experience for free, then mm -hmm. hit the find a video we did or something like that. But if you want yeah. to come do it right, that's how much it costs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Awesome stuff. Jason had a question a little while ago I want to get back mm -hmm. to here. He says, um, can he give us some examples of some challenges he's had, challenges he's had with customers and how he flipped them to review? So if you're talking about people that don't want to leave a review and how we how you get them to leave a review, uh, I'm, I'll answer it in that sort of way first, because I think I gave some examples of people that uh, were angry or, or didn't like things and how you could kind of win them back and make them a customer mm -hmm. from there. But um, if someone doesn't want to leave a review, ultimately, I'm going to kind of take a weird answer here is you can't really force them to, because if you force them to, you're probably not going to get their full effort. Yeah, But what you can do if they're not going to leave an actual review is just get the feedback in any sort of way. Someone asked before, if someone just tells me something but doesn't want to leave it online, how can I use it? We talked about how you potentially could do that. But in the end, the culture you want to build and the methods you want to take is to get as much feedback to be better. Because if someone tells you, this is what I like, this is what I didn't like, but I'm not posting it online, you can still learn from that. And then the next person who wants to put it online you can make sure you have those things kind of going. Um, if someone doesn't want to leave you a review, I think you could ask like, well, what's stopping you or not what's stopping you, but like, you know, hey, is there anything I could do to help make it a little bit easier? Some people explain the whole process of what nice job is. You know, it's a little bit more wordy, but hey, I use this software. What it does is going to follow up to make sure that you leave the review whenever is most convenient for you. It's mm -hmm. also going to help you pick the right platform. So don't worry if you don't want to use Google, it'll have the ability to leave it on all those. Um, sometimes you're going to go through all that. You can say, it'll also give you the ability to go back and leave it on another site if you want to as well. Um, but ultimately, again, you can only ask, it's not begging, it's not requiring. Yeah. But if you're asking and you are saying from step one, that we are going to invite this feedback at the very least, if they don't leave a review online, I guarantee you, cause you set them up enough, they'll know what to say in the word of mouth. So if they don't want to, oh, I'm staying off the grid. I don't want to leave a review online. Well, when their cousin, their uncle, their nephew, their sister, their brother, when they ask for a recommendation, if they were happy with you and you told them what's important, well, I want to make sure we were on time. I want to make sure we we're under budget. I want to make sure all this stuff. If you told them what you think you did well, and even if they don't leave it online, you're still arming them to be a vocal advocate for you in the platform that works for them. And I, I would give I would give this as well. Um, the pest control company I was talk, talking about, um, their technicians ask for the reviews and they talk about how and, and 
and I don't want to open this can of worms right now, but like we, we train companies to, um, uh, talk about reviews on day one of the project that we're going to be asking for them. We, uh, we give them word tracks and coaching on how to ask for them and all these other things. And I got, I will tell you guys right now, when your employee is standing there with somebody and they're like, um, Hey, uh, I mean, this one kid said to me the other day, he says, Tom, in a few minutes, I'm going to leave and I'm going to close out your job in the system. And, um, and you're going to get a text. And in that text, it's just a quick link to give a review to the company. And, um, this kid had a great sense of humor. So the way he said it was really just him, but he's like, you know, me keeping my job depends on the, on the, on the level of reviews that I get. So it would really mean a lot to me if you could review us. I, the, the first thing I did when that text came through is I went and reviewed him because number one, he asked me to number two, he was massively likable guys. When you're likable, when your people are personal, when they're smiling, when they're neat, people want to help you. Okay. They want to help your employees, your technicians or whatever it is. The grade cards I talked about earlier, we get hundreds of these a year. Uh, like if, if we did 400 jobs a year, we might not get a grade card on three, uh, on five of them. Yeah. Okay. Like seriously, because our crew leaders were the ones that were having that conversation, building that relationship on the job site with them every day, petting the dogs and all these things. Yeah. So you really have to train that. So, um, all right. Somebody wants to know what the heck that tool was that you were handing out in mile high. Yeah, I'm going to say, I asked, I asked my wife to, to off, off screen to grab my bag. I think I actually still have one in here because there was two things <laughs> we left out on the counter there. Uh, one was uh, the mugs. Yep. If, if you got those there. So nice yep. job. Mile high Bravo summit there. Um, and then the other was, I thought I had it in here. I don't think I do, but it's a key organizer. Right. Um, and so you have a lot of keys. What it is that the one side, you unscrew the screw, They'll be able to you put the keys and the spacer in there and you run the tube through it. So that way what it does, it turns your keys into almost like a Swiss army knife. There you um, go. We got them for another show or whatever, and people love them. I don't actually use any keys. I think I have like two keys in my life. Okay. Um, however, for the people to use it, but I have seen people put other things kind of on there to Swiss army. So anything kind of run a rod through. Cool. Um, but most importantly, Steve, uh, I had to fly back. Uh, we were just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia and Canada. Uh, and I was trying to keep the weight down on my Czech international luggage. Uh, so Steve, make it whatever you want. But I was trying to <laughs> to make sure everyone got a chance to do those. <laughs> if I, I don't think we end up bringing back anything. It's also there. Um, however, if you want one of these mugs, I do have a couple left over uh, at our office here in BC. Uh, if you want to drop me an email, sean at nicejob.com, uh, S-H-A-W-N, so spell it correctly. Um, if you want to drop me an email, if you want one of those mugs, if, if you're using nice job or, or we can figure something out, I can get one of those in your hands. Uh, but yeah, key organizer. Yes. Steve, he's going to blow his wife's mind. He's going to blow his wife's mind. He said, hey, I knew what the mug was. <laughs> you know That's what? You, you, you never know. You, you, get, you never you get, know. Man. You see some people with stains on their shirts. They might not be familiar with how that, that all works. That's uh, right. I did see well, another one, Tom. We touched on really quick. I know we're at time sure. here, but yeah. about video reviews, um, yeah, what do you got? like a Facebook live thing, video reviews, it's kind of possible. I think in your business world, you probably want maybe one to two video testimonials for like over the course of a year. The thing with video testimonials are, is that the time it takes you to watch two video testimonials that are actually detail oriented, you could read like 50 to 60 reviews. Um, mm -hmm. The data just isn't there for them effectiveness. I'm a big proponent of video, but for customer reviews, you're better off getting text reviews, turning into social media posts. And then if you want to go even a step further, this is what stuff like if you ever contact something like me, little strategies I'll give you is you also can take like your 10 best of the week and turn yeah. that into a video, put that on your website. But the other thing is you think people, we talked about the S and the C's and things like that. You think they get nervous leaving a text, put a right. camera in front of them. Put a camera. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I would agree. Like I've, I've got some, we've got some clients and stuff who have um, amazing video testimonials from people but what they do is they get like you said one or two of those people a year where they bring the film crew in and they really do it right and then they market the crap mm -hmm. out of that thing you yeah. know and it's all over but the the bulk of the reviews because they're easy to get remember you want to make this easy on people and i'll tell you guys and you know this the minute you put a camera up especially with a woman what's she thinking is my hair and the lighting and blah 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 and this like there's just too much insecurity yeah. to not do it 
um, right with the right production value so that everyone looks really good, sounds really good. Uh, and this again comes back to just making it easy. So I'll even give you the other way around, Tom. I live in front of a lens. Yeah. And if you go and you do it to me, it's kind of like, a, uh, like even I don't get like nervous or whatever. I'm kind of like, yeah, like, this is not the mentality. I got to do this again. Yeah. yeah. And also some, <laughs> some industries, some industries is not thing. I always joke about like the video review for plumbers usually doesn't go how they think it was like, oh, well, you know, it just, it's a lot of fiber and it just, I don't know, old pipes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, uh, if you're thinking about, okay, but I like video, I like that sentiment, the people I would target, because with nice job, you're getting the customers mm -hmm. you're serving every day, mm -hmm. day after day, things like that, right? Is go for your long-term clients. Um, don't worry about trying to, you know, shoot a video, things like that. But if you get your long-term clients and in a video testimonial, 130, a minute 30 or less, if they can talk about their first time, their next time, and when they knew they truly loved you, mm -hmm. that's a video that's going to have a ton of legs. But again, do it right. Little shaky iPhone, or even if you go get a gimbal, all that stuff, yeah. you're better off getting some three-point lighting, making it look really dramatic, and have it be a true like <gasps> testimonial. And then mm -hmm. have your, if I'm ready to book it, if I'm searching online, I'm not really looking for a video. I'm looking for as much social proof as I can get, and text can be there. At Nice Job, we are going to try to work in for some social sharing, things like that. There'll probably be, like I said, some animation elements. We'll yeah. probably go a little bit more towards there since everyone's got HD cameras and it's very much a visual medium. But when it comes mm -hmm. to speed and effectiveness, the studies, like the jury is out. Video reviews just don't cut the mustard. You're better gotcha. off getting text reviews and then spending your marketing dollars amplifying them. And if you want to go the video route or you want to go a little bit more of that branding bigger out, do it the right way and make it a little bit longer form. I love it, man. Well, Sean, before you share where people can find you and all this other stuff or, um, you know, and just any closing thoughts you have, guys, um, go to the contractorfight.com forward slash forward slash nice job uh, if you want to learn more uh, about what they got going over there, the contractorfight.com forward slash nice job. And um, I know they'll take really good care of you. So, Sean, before we get out of here, any parting thoughts? Anything uh, so you wish I would ask you? Yeah, well, the last thing I'll say is I, I, we talked about the uh, the mug. I saw Roz put it there in the comments, things like that. Um, I do have a limited quantity of those, so you want to act a little bit on that. <laughs> um, but at the very least, um, the one takeaway whenever I do anything from this is, is that it's okay to ask for reviews and ask for feedback. It's imperative business sort of thing. I think it would be amazing for you to use a software that does it great. But even if for some reason you don't want to use Nice Job please have the takeaway be that you're going to value yourself enough to get feedback. You're going to find out how you're doing. And if you're getting bad reviews and you're getting bad feedback, fix it. There's enough people out there doing stuff that's not helping the world. If you have an incredible talent, you have a credible mm -hmm. skill, or you're willing to work hard enough to get the talent and skill, use it for good and go out there and be making a kind of a positive impact. Uh, nicejob.com, pretty simple on the website or contractorfight.com slash nicejob. I actually prefer you go to that one there because then I know you came from the contractor fight. I can make sure to look up some names when we go to events and things like that because we want to do more in the future with you guys and give kind of a personal hello and stuff like that. Um, but at the very least, I, I mentioned my email, sean at nicejob.com. Feel free to reach out to me if you ever just want to kind of talk some shop and things like that. I love kind of talking to people. I don't claim to be a marketing expert, but I surround myself with people smarter than me every single day. So if I don't know the answer. I'll get you to someone that does. And we really just want to be the tide that rises all boats here. So any way we can help out as an organization, as an individual, we'd be happy to do so. And I thank you, Tom, for uh, what I'll say, allowing us to partner with you, because uh, I'll, I'll, if I can pull the curtain back a little bit, this wasn't like a, hey, we want to partner, like, good, great. We had some back and forth conversations. We had a, we had some virtual beers uh, over to kind of discuss mm -hmm. how this kind of worked. And the one thing we settled on was we want to make sure that we're always, you know, backing up our promises, backing up our values. But our main goal, contract to fight, but nice job kind of coming together in this one is just to help everybody there maximize the ability that they sort of have. So thank you so much for allowing us to kind of awesome. be a part of the whole gang and get integrated. Your community is absolutely spectacular. I love them all. And uh, I can't wait to, to meet even more of them. Well, I really appreciate you making the time to be here tonight, man, and um, appreciate all you do. And guys, go to thecontractorfight.com forward slash nice job. Check it out. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, this stuff works and social proof is huge. 
Okay. People, people want to make a safe decision and they're guys, this is part of building your brand. Okay. When I look at a company that only has one or two reviews, okay. Next to the company that's got 50, 60, 200 reviews. I don't even consider the, the one with the lower reviews. I just don't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because that's too much social proof. So anyway, man, dude, have a great night and, uh, I uh, appreciate you guys in the fight. Thanks for hanging out here. Share this, uh, tag somebody that needs to see it, whatever. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next time.